the word of yahweh el elion elohim is always alive and powerful forever sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and it's profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or very accurately handling this very great unique infallible and inerrant great word of truth glory be to my ave sit kano to the highest the only righteous lord of a god in relationship to his people on this earth who has made man in his own image to be the crown of his creation and to give him such great honor of a position to take place and our first federal head lost it by his arrogance and eve in her ignorance the result of such what we are facing today the rising of philosophies the rising of rationalism the rise in empiricism and not to believe this great infallible and inerrant word of truth and a man being more on enough not to understand the right path of the lord of a god is only in christ and in search of god coming and running around all the world <laughs> believing their dogmas practices and not able to be firm enough to stand in the faith where we have been told to stand by representing our lives to be in the midst of such great intensified stage of the angelic conflict our lives a glory of truth every believer in this great and unique dispensation of the church age has been made to be shining like light and salt on this earth the principle of becoming walking bibles by putting into mind memnisco second peter 32 the teachings of the old testament as well as the new testament of becoming walking bibles to defend and to glorify the lord of a god to whom have to be the greatest glory of all time as he said he is not going to share his glory to any other things As Romans chapter 1 writes to us a greatest discourse to tell professing wise they became fools thought to exchange the glory of Lord to the creation rather than giving the glory to the creator such men calling themselves to be christians like the morgan freeman who runs his show in the national geographic channel to tell the story of god <laughs> in search of that story if would have gone to read the mind of christ by the right one of our gifted male spiritual pastor teacher who teaches the word day by day word upon word line upon line precept upon precept with proper exegesis isagogics and categories with the right dispensing technique of dispensations and if he would wake up to realize that it has to be for the right work of ambassadorship the right work of missionary the right the right work where we have to shine like the principle of light and salt if they would certainly walk up to that fact and if they would really represent my lord holding forth to the truth rather than making some money or commercial activities over that it would have been a great renovation when we stand only for the truth when we stand it is lord of our god who is going to work in us the greatest victory of all time a noble victory a mighty victory an exceeding victory a victory wherewith he is proud of us a victory wherewith he will make us to be his towers and a victory where he cherishes in it because it has been worked 
Asa by the Lord of our God. That great victory where the Bible tells for us when we read 2 Samuel chapter 23 verses 11 to 12, the greatest example of Shama who gives us that Lord worked in him the victory. A victory of a great one. And the Hebrew word which teaches for us victory over there, it's a very strange word which calls us Tesua. And that meant to say it is an act of God which have already been delivered and have been experienced. By that we mean in this intensified stage of the angelic conflict, every believer has won over Satan, not O-N-E, but W-O-N, won, won the victory over Satan. In eternity past, where Lord our God has made us to be holy and blameless. And following the scripture of 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, telling to us that you are not of your own, you need to glorify the Lord our God in your body. Already experienced, already worked out, already won the battle. And we are just walking in the paths of that, being firm enough. That's the requirement of evolution to be positive. In order to know that we cannot be certainly fleeing off or running away from the burden, from the responsibility laid down upon our shoulders in order to enjoy that great eternal life given for us with great dignity, with great integrity to say that, Lord, we were not ashamed to keep your word on this earth. We haven't denied thy word. But we certainly were representatives of the word like an unprofitable slave. That which is our duty to be done, we have done it to the maximum. Because we were in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we never grieved thee, we never squelched thee, we never lied unto thee. But in fact, indeed, whenever we grieved and we squelched and we lied by a thought, word, or deed, absolutely, Lord, you have made a provision for us to use the privacy of the priesthood to use rebound and get back into thy fellowship because time is short and we need to purchase the Kairos moments in the chronological time so that every breath has to be a great victory of you and great glory to you. We are not here to flee or to run away. We are indeed here to stand. When we read the great example of 2 Samuel chapter 23, one of the mighty men of David, over the Philistines, Lord our God, worked out a great victory, says the scripture. What is that word working out? Asa again, to build up, to fashion, when you vanish the Hebrew word nous, which meant to say to flit away, to run away. And do you know from where you are running today? Day by day teaching of the word of God. Day by day gathering your spiritual manna. Not able to truly realize how important it is for us to learn the mind of Christ day by day, breath by breath, as long as we have nostril, as long as we have breath in our nostrils. The pastor teachers who do not have this responsibility to be God's workmen on this earth, who have come either from the thoughts of Kleptes, Lastes, Misthotes, Tupas, Canapes, Tiflos, and Shuras oriented ones who have been telling for them weekly assembly of the church is enough, no needed for you to be occupied in the mind of Christ day by day, breath by breath, so that you can become walking Bible, so that our greatest disease is nothing but to put upon the new clothes of the Lord our God in Endikaius, in Echaiosiatis, Thessalatia, that is what in righteousness and in the benignity of truth, that should be the world should recognize in us that he has a disease, he has a disease of righteousness and benignity of truth. And that disease, what we have, should certainly glorify the Lord of our God to the maximum. Not the health of unrighteousness, but the disease of righteousness. That's what we need to have. And if every believer will wake up to that fact, then certainly they will not vanish off. They will not run away from the responsibility laid down upon their shoulders. And why we are telling this today to you? Because, dear brethren, already the battle which has been won, 
we are just walking in the paths of that battle. The victory has always been found in Christ, just not victory, great victory. A victory of remarkable achievement, a victory of great legendary impact, not only on this earth, even in the angelic conflict towards the angels so that they can learn from your life. A victory of truth, a great victory, those who overcome, saith our Lord our God in, in Revelations chapter 2 and 3, to teach for us. I will make him to be the temple, I will make him to be the pillar in the temple of my Lord, those who overcome. And have you overcome by faith? We believe what the infallible and inerrant word of God teaches to us. We know that's our life. And how can we run away from this responsibility laid down upon our shoulders? When Lord is searching for those men, 2 Chronicles 16, 9, 2 and 4 through the entire world, whose hearts can be loyal to the Lord of our God and stand in the gap for the Lord's battle. And do you think only certain few, every believer indeed is a loyal one to the Lord? Every believer has been baptized to that great royal family in Christ. At the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, when he believes in the Lord's work. And every believer has been given this great privilege to fight the Lord's battle, being entrusted with Lord's word. But what are we doing today? Do you know how are we in the sight of those men, says our Lord our God in the greatest discourse for us to understand in Luke chapter 10 verses 21. When we read the scriptures, the Bible doctrine tells for us very specifically, I praise thee, Father, the Lord of the heaven and the Lord of the earth. Thou hast hid these things, the things of the mystery doctrine of the church age, from wise and prudent. And he has revealed them to whom? To the babes. We, the Gentile nations, do not know what is the procedure of worshipping that great Lord. But he has made us for us not to be lawless, but we have been made for us in the new law to be controlled of the Spirit, Ephesians 5.18b. How you can be controlled of the Spirit when you are not using rebound, the confession of our sins through 1 John 1.9. 1, 1 John 1.6 1, and 7 and 8 and 10 gives you the four categories of the people who don't love to walk in the light of the word of the Lord of our God. Yet they are abiding in darkness, they think they are walking in light. By that we shall know whether they are a spirit of truth or spirit of error. You cannot make God a liar. Since you are a liar, you will, make, you will think that Lord also will deal in such manner, but Lord of our God is not so. Whatsoever is of a sin, Certainly our Lord our God says, you are out of fellowship in your thought, word or mind. And when you are out of fellowship, that doesn't neutralize the fact that you are not grieving and squelching or lying to the indwelling mentoring minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But certainly it meant to say for us, you are certainly grieving him, squelching him and lying him. And how dare it is for you to work against in your own energy of your flesh to tell that you can do Lord's work by not confession of your sins and getting back to the fellowship of the Lord our God and saying that I will do some good works, I will do some moral works, I will pay some tithes for you, I will do such and such deeds. I will go as a missionary to India and I will do the things there. Rebound. First make the account with the Lord of our God straight. That which is right and good, that which is upright and perfect in the sight of the Lord of our God that you have to do. Zion in the sight, in the eyes. In the eyes for you to understand if there is no light, your eyes cannot look it. That's what the word Zion is, in the sight of the Lord, in the light of the fortizo work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what is required, what is demanding, what is needed. And that's what should be right, always in the sight of the Lord of our God, for us to work out the glory of Yahweh Elohim given for us in this church age. But what are we finding today in our pulpits? Though you are babes, you haven't really understood the greatest glory of all time bestowed upon you. 
this greatest glory during the period of Moses they wanted to take in. Moses wanted, Moses went along to say not only just Eldad and Medad to be out of the two out of seventy, the two out of seventy. But I wish the entire camp could be filled with the Lord God, the Holy Spirit work. That is what it has been made today in our pulpits to understand every believer has been and the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to run and to walk and to understand what is the truth in the law. To be controlled of the spirit at every breath. Therefore, if you are being the baby, but the word of the Lord of God says, you be baby, then you can be like a wise of a baby and you can enter the kingdom of God. And in contrary, says First Corinthians for us, Apostle Paul, when he writes, In your malice you be baby, but in understanding you be as a wise man. If you are not able to be a baby in your malice, then certainly you cannot become a wise man in understanding the word of God. What is that you have to be baby? It may seem foolish for them to use rebound in the confession of their sins rather than paying a money for them to get back into the fellowship of the Lord. Because the church gimmicks and tricks pray today for you and certainly crave for you to give money so that you can have a sort of satisfaction in your heart and soul to tell that since you have given such money, since you have paid such money since you have given for them some charity works of love certainly you have been reconciled to God no way no truth use rebound grow up to be an adult man take the responsibility of your sins so that you shall not take the same course of action again whenever you come back to grievance squelch and lie in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit by ignoring your responsibility and every believer has been not taught the importance of rebound. Every believer is not taught the importance of getting back into the fellowship of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 30 and 30. If you would judge yourselves, you shall not be judged. That's the reason yet you haven't understood. Though we are babies, Lord God, the Holy Spirit reigns in us, the greater one in us than the one who is in this world and certainly leads us mightily when we take a firm stand of truth to speak nothing but the truth. How stupid we are not to speak the truth. Teaching and bearing false witness. What is profitable for you and is it profitable for those who are hearing to you? Does not Timothy has been warned by Apostle Paul to tell? Those who hear to you when you, see, when you teach them sound Bible doctrine, you will save yourself and the one who are hearing to you. But why are we not able to speak the truth? Because you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And it is a well-pleasing thing in the sight of the Lord God, the Father in heaven, to reveal for us this mystery doctrine. Because when we look at Ezekiel chapter 27, as we are continuing our discourse to tell the world how it has been embedded by the glorious things of this earth, making the world to be the Garden of Eden to those who grievance, squelch and lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The world has its Gamadites from the sons of Arwad, from the sons of the genealogy of Ham, giving them to go and to give a discourse of Nagad. Until another someone opens, they cannot come to know. But during the line of Sham, we have read how it was in one of our tapes. The way how Satan certainly inspired Eve. Is it so? Does the Lord has told for you? And Eve came along to believe the lies of Satan. And when we have read that tape by the grace of the Lord our God in his divine illumination, we understood. Like the work of Ham, what Ham did by expounding the shameness of his father, so Eve in his thought, so Satan in his thought came along to Eve to expound what it is meant to say to be like God. But Eve would have failed, but Eve failed, she would have told, we are already like gods, enjoying our eternal life in the Lord. We don't require anything more than that. But Eve wanted something. 
like the way how Ham wanted something to tell that I know something about my father. Then who came and covered the shameness of their father? The sham. And Japheth. Through the genealogy of Shem, we find Christ our Lord our God coming and making for us to cover the sin what Adam and Eve has made. Through the genealogy of Shem, we can find Christ Jesus our Lord our God coming, says Luke chapter 3, a discourse of it. Through that great Lord our God, we have our salvation being covered. And those who follow Christ our Lord our God, the blessings of it. But for us in this church age, when we are understanding the world has been made as a garden of Eden, beautifying that world, the prince of the power of this air, we need to understand what is well pleasing in the sight of the Lord our God for us. So Ezekiel chapter 27 verses 11 and following discourses for us as we are continuing our discourse in that. The greatest responsibility for every believer to take in not to witness for lies, but to speak only the truth with a stand firm only in truth. So Ezekiel chapter 27 verses 13 and following, it teaches for us to understand who are these people of Zavan, the Hebrew word Yayin. Zavan meant to say who are hot and attractive were having their effervescence and that effervescence in the vitality who is having such discourse for them to make up and continuing this in verse number 13 Zavan and then the Tubal and then the Meshesh and then we find there the son of Zaphat what they were they are being made to be the traders of you, the merchants of you, where in the soul of you. And from where they come up, they come from the root of Adam. That's what human, only a human can have that soul. Even the animals are having, but the human is being made to be the crown of his creation. So to this world, it has become a hot and attractive thing for them to understand and to cherish and nourish in the rationalism and in the empiricism of their thoughts. Providing them, as we have noted yesterday, from the Tarshish, one being merchant, with all the wealth of the silver, iron, tin and lead, and gave them to be as a trading of fare, or what you call a work of a, the menial wage of their work. And over here in verse number 13, we find being attractive for them in the nepesh of their soul. What is that nepesh of the soul? That's where the thinking grows along. And God made man in his own image. And the people do not really understand it is nothing but the soul is the key factor for the revolution to believe in Christ. The soul is the deciding factor. And this Adama where was been made in the terms of Lord of God's creation of his own image. Anyone who kills a man, murders a man is going against the image of God. So this work of trading is happening in the soul of Adam and they have been raising up the articles of copper. Here the word is very interesting for us. They are making, making these men to be trained in the terms of utensils or the weapons or in the terms of copper. What is that copper? Dear brethren, the Hebrew word nakuwa which is nothing but throat of a serpent which whispers and which certainly causes you to go through the word called as nakash and that nakash is nothing but filthiness prognosticate it is causing the vessels of Adam to become or the image of God in their soul to become The vessels of copper, the utensils of filthiness. 
Every believer in Christ have to wake up to this fact. How long you will think you will look along and understand prognosticate theory? Prognosticate which meant to say for our Indians to realize awaiting for the future, smelling something for the future or knowing something of the future. But we find to be the Javan in Christ, to be hot and attractive to the word of the Lord of our God like Shamma, using his deliverance already being expected victory which has been known for us, the victory in Christ, which he has worked in us for his son so that we could not be ashamed when we keep his word on this earth. How is going to work in us by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, 1 John 4, 4. The victory which Christ our Lord our God has already won on the cross. But here the image or the things pertaining to the soul of Adam is been replaced by the utensils of copper, which is nothing but nakash, the filthiness of this earth. And who they are doing it? The hot and attractive teachings of these false pastor teachers. The hot and attractive teachings of the religion dogmas, religion philosophies. The hot and attractive teaching of the science and technology today. And in today's Christendom, dear brethren, they are providing for you to certainly make a market of trafficking over there. Trading being not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Moab, again we read that word. Trading not to walk in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. Trading not to be in the living of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But trading them to provide in the filthiness of Nakash, of Satan's thinking. That's how Eve fell for it. When Lord our God made in his own image, his own creation to be placed as a honor, to be kept him to be the crown of his creation, Satan came along by an hot and attractive words. And it came along like a merchant to trade in the soul of you and causing you now to become the weapons of copper, which is nothing but prognostical matters. But in Christ we have everything, no need for us to expect the future now, but we have everything revealed for us through the book of Apocalypse, Revolution, what we are, how we are. And this man, Morgan Freeman, yesterday as I was watching the TV, National Geographic Channel, he comes. And history, I think so, History Channel. What is your end? What is your fate? That's what he's asking to one of the uh, Buddha-oriented man. And uh, he tells, was been thinking that he was some, somewhere 900 years back, he was been reincarnated in this, uh, in this person and they teach for you that. And according to the terms of his end times, that's what eschatology should be the word, and he calls the word apocalypse. And he tells there, it is just a matter which begins and ends. There is no proper end. It's a good information for the theologians who work out in the word of God to tell how foolish the world is. But how foolish it would be when the word of God man who has been there as a Christian in Christ doesn't know what is the end time. Doesn't realize exactly what is the truth in Christ, what it has to be for the Lord. The new heavens and the new earth. After the rapture of the church, the tribulation over here for seven years, and then we come back to the Lord of our God to rule in the millennial kingdom. And then one day of great fight of Armageddon battle, Revelation chapter 20. And furthermore, making us for us to be in the new heavens and the new earth for the ages to follow one upon the another to teach and to preach about the glory of the Lord, Ephesians 2, 7. And these things have been revealed to the babes and it was well pleasing in the sight of the Lord our God so that they can understand their future very specifically rather than building their minds in the filthiness of Satan's cosmic thinking. Progenistas. We no need to look upon the future, expect our future. We have what the Bible says for it. It stands firm. Though the heaven and earth will pass away, the word of the Lord our God will stand and abide and abides forever. That's enough for us. 
No need in search of looking the theory. As Gautama Buddha, Siddhartha, that's what his name was all about. A man who has been there under a tree had his had to get out of his sexual temptations and to sacrifice because that will be a suffering for him. And the one who has been called after certain days of meditation an enlightened one, maybe that will be good, that will be looking good according to their terms. But already a Christian in Christ is a saint. He has been set apart not to be just called as an enlightened one, but he is a holy one of the Lord. And don't ever misunderstand that I am also preaching under the tree. That doesn't mean that I have been enlightened in those terms. <laughs> because you know, wherever we go in my country, India, whenever they follow a path, they want to follow the same thing, saying that even this man was also under the tree. Now, this is the field of the place where I come every day to learn the word of God. And I record these messages over here because when the sun comes to its shade, it will be too hot. So I stand under this, or, and, and I come under this tree to kneel down and to preach the word. Don't misunderstand to the terms the way how Buddha was. So the world is in search of progastinicate theory, not we. We have the completed can of scripture. We have everything our faith in the word of the Lord of our God. To the image of the soul of Lord, what does Satan do? It comes to make you to fill it with the filthiness. <laughs> Therefore, Apostle Paul writes pertaining to that woman, she is a weaker vessel. And when she is a weaker vessel, she has been filled with the filthiness of Satan's theology. Makash. And how many people on this earth are being filled day by day with the Nakash? I refer strongly to those people like the believing sect. Leave apart about the unbelieving sect because already they have been blinded, says the scripture, 2 Corinthians 4 4. Coming to the believing sect, though we have been told, greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. Though they have been called to use rebound and be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. Living in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Walking in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Purchasing the glorious work of the Lord our God in the terms of Kairos movements in the chronological time. Yet you are not able to understand the transformation that is what metaschematizoan of the angel of light. Which is shining in the midst of you to ignore the right word of the Lord our God. Your weapon for sword of the spirit is nothing but the word of the Lord of our God. Your only offensive weapon. Does not you read the 40 days and 40 nights of temptations for Christ our Lord of our God when the scripture says for us, He divided them with the word, with the word, with the word. It stands written, it stands written, it stands written. He did not go to speculate anything out of his mind. And that's the principle where every believer ought to know while they are on this pilgrimage trip by the grace of the Lord our God's pilgrimage turn by the grace which has been bestowed upon us not to be used it in vain we have to be aware to realize that our word which comes from our mouth seasoned with salt represents all the time to teach them it is written, it is written this is what the word says and not the translations what you read but going back to the original languages of the scriptures of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and looking in depth and understanding in depth and for that reason the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher of a male one is to teach day by day not week by week if you go week by week you will grow weak but we are called to be alert with proper inculcation day by day breath by breath Whenever we open our mouth, says First Peter, for chapter four, verse thirteen, the divine oracles of God that we have to speak. How many of them are doing that? The greater you have become in the image of God, like the utensils of the coppers, the cash, you will certainly not become the javan for the Lord. But every believer has been called to be a soldier for Christ. A soldier of a great example, what we can find in the Old Testament, Shaman. The man who never fled, but he stood. 
That's what the difference is all about in Christianity, dear brethren. We stand, we stood, and that's what he stood. And if you don't stand for a witness to the truth, then certainly you and you are also running away from the truth day by day. How many of the people like the bona fide gifted pastor teachers who have this burden to teach the word of the Lord of our God are standing in daily renovation of the thinking of the congregation mind? To renovate first, they have to inhale, then they can exhale. They have to take in the right word of the Lord of our God. They have to dig the word in Christ every breath. And dear brethren, the image of God to be the crown of his creation, making man in his image. If it has been ending up to become the sad part, the filthiness of this world's cosmos thinking, breath by breath. Or an example to tell to you, your own son or daughter, who are not growing up to the terms of your image, and if they turn out to become something sheer rats, will you not feel bad for it? Though, you, though they have the sperm of you, and you are a great legend on this earth. Like one of the uh, movies of uh, Mel Gibson, Patriot. Uh, he goes along to write there, the king who had, and his son was not having the same character of that king, and he lost it. Like the same manner today, dear brethren, if you don't have the sperm of Christ in you to be like a lion and to be like a legendary one on this earth, then certainly your children will also not possess that. And if you have the fear towards the Lord like Shamma to stand and to fight the battle of Christ, because every believer has the sperm of Christ, says 1 John 3, 9. The spores of Christ have to be roused when the pastor teacher is properly watering them, is properly training them up with the word of the Lord of our God day by day, breath by breath, and inculcating their minds to be the real image of God. Not to be the filthiness of useless vessels, being stored the thinking of this world of cosmos diabolicus, what we look. And though you are not having the sperm of Christ, being unbelievers, they are producing the character of their honor by giving them the honor by beautifying this earth, by making everything that could be pleasable to Satan's plan. That's what we have read earlier verses in Ezekiel chapter 27 from verse number 1 to 11 and 12. They have beautified, they became the traders, they became the pirates, they became the merchants. They have bought for you for this and they built, they built in the center of the sea and they're making their ships to work along. But we, being Christians, are not able to work even to stand in the gap for the Lord of our God and praise His word and to get glory to His word by standing firm for the truth. And every day you go neglecting this truth. And you will have a tough time at the judgment seat of Christ for neglecting this truth. If you don't fill with the water of the word of God in your soul day by day, breath by breath, through the proper procedure or the proper mechanics. After believing in Christ, Lord God, the Holy Spirit is your mentor. And at the moment of salvation, you have been made once again trichotomous from dichotomy. And your activated or created spirit, human spirit we talk about. If he is not controlling your soul to change the facets of your soul from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint, then certainly you have lost your true calling in Christ. You have lost your true purpose in Christ. You have lost the image and the glory of God who made you to be the crown of his creation <laughs> to the nakash filthiness of this earth. And you are becoming the vessel of Satan rather than becoming vessel of honoring to God. Partial obedience is not the way our Lord of our God calls. Our Lord of our God calls absolute obedience. 
of a lot of God calls to honor those men who take a bold step of faith by obeying his word. Like Meshach, Shadrach, Abagnado, who said, Concerning this matter, there is no need for us to answer. If our, our, our Lord our God delivers, it's okay. If not, we will not burn on and we will die for it. Many people, whether they watch it or not, whether they subscribe it or not, whether they come to understand this word of the Lord our God or not, we are not worried. And concerning that matter, we are not interested because we are not answerable to men. We are answerable to Lord our God. And if at all this kneeling ministry of Christ should continue, it is by His grace. Not by our own energy, not by our own thoughts, not by our own power. And if at all it continues, it is on His grace. And if you don't strive with your body and having mastery over it, never you shall realize your work. Christ our Lord our God himself exemplified for us to kneel down in his presence. And he says for us, when his disciples were sleeping, couldn't you watch and pray for me? Why they slept? They were not on the knees what Lord our God has made for them. Be upon your knees and read the Bible, will you get sleep? Be upon your knees and hear the word of God, will you get sleep? Be upon your knees and write the Bible, will you get sleep? How foolish these men are to become the utensils of Nakash of Satan. You are not to be designed in that realm. You are designed in the image of God to be his crown of glory of his creation. A one man like Shamam is required for us to stand in the gap. But every believer has been designed to be Shamam in Christ. Because every believer has the equal privilege and equal opportunity. Every believer has been given the greatest polity of privileges of all time. Every believer has been given the heavenly citizen of Christ. And every believer has been given this great privilege to do the work, to do the work of the Lord of our God. Carrying his cross day by day. The unbelievers are having the sperma of Satan and they are certainly doing the work of Satan, producing their characters to be beautifying this world. But since we are not of this world, we don't have the sperma of Satan. We have the sperma of Christ. Then where is the true glory for the Lord of our God to be given by our lives? How it is and where it is and when we are going to give it? After you die and go back to heaven and regret for the fact what you have to be done on this earth, you haven't done it. That's what our missionary writes in the 16th century in his letter to the love of God. What I have done is nothing. I would have done more. I would have done more better than this. Because of the ability of the Lord of our God in us. The ability, the power and the strength when we look upon the four Greek words of dunamis, anarchia, kratos and iskun power. The dunamis of the all sovereign power of the Lord of our God, omnipotent. The energia, the operating power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when we are really humble enough and obedient enough to be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and not to grieve, not to squelch, and not to witness a lie, but to be saying to the fact, we can do nothing against the truth, but if it, there is anything, we have to be only for the truth. That's the energia power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and talking along in tongues. The tongues crowd, the Pentecostal crowd. Wrongly mistaken, the energy of power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to the extreme they go. At one end we find Jehovah Witnesses who don't believe the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the conception of the Lord of our God, who have been taken to require that flesh in order to satisfy God the Father in heaven so that we could be out from the slave market of sin. And on the other extreme end, these unbelievers who think they can respond in emotion rather than thinking. And who are this? The Pentecostal crowd. The Angastra Muthas demon controlling their vocal cords to preach. Without having tongues they can do nothing. And you know what it is? They will find it. At the Bhima throne of Christ what they have lost in this valuable life. How they have been fed with the nakash of the filthiness of their mind to become the vessels of such. They will find it. But the great pain, the way how they grieve and squelch and lie, that's what the cost is all about, I'm worried. 
at the principle of grieving and squelching and lying, they are achieving their pleasures, walking contrary to the truth. And yet they don't change because their ministers are having a lot of money in that, in spite of the word of Jeremiah 8 12, when the word says for us, very specifically. If you don't rightly divide the word of the Lord our God, I will send your wives to other men. And if that incident has happened to one of the greatest church in Bangalore, in the south part of my country, India, in the state of Karnataka, the minister's wife being eloped with the committee member, and she wanted a notice of divorce to prove that she wants to start a church, and she wanted to go along, and then too the people are not ashamed that they have to leave such Pentecostal churches. And they're happy running for it. Why will they not become the wrath, do you know? Because they love money on this earth. Very simple logic. Money is the root cause for all the will. They are not really doing Lord's service. If they would have doing, if they would have been thinking that they're doing Lord's service, they would certainly kneel down in his presence and they would understand what it is, Lord, you really want me to do on this earth. Not emotion. But to change the pattern of their thinking, thinking, thinking. That's what covering in one of the story of God yesterday, that clip what I was watching. One of the men teaches to Morgan Freeman, it's all about our thinking, how we need to control. Christianity right from the beginning teaches about the renovation of your thinking, the metamorphosis of your thinking. Not that what you certainly look, Because the misconception, paralagizomai, wrong calculation of it. And teaching for us what is that wrong calculation? The fithan logia terms of this Pentecostal doctrine. Persuasive speech to lead them, thinking that they're doing God's work. And what is all about that paralagizomai miscalculation? They think while they are speaking in tongues, they are really having the edification in their life. They think unless a miracle happens to them, they are not doing God's work. <laughs> and you know what is a miracle for them? When an empty moron lays their hand upon that empty head, they should jump along and dance along and talk along in tongues. That's the miracle for them. But at least believing the attitude of unbelievers, what I watched yesterday in the tape, the story of God by Morgan Freeman. A Buddha tells to them, one of the followers of Buddha, a miracle is what exactly you change your thinking. And you look what exactly the truth demands. But that concept is very clear for us in Christ. There is no need for us to listen from such unbelieving quotations. But the word of the Lord of our God says for us very specifically, the greatest miracle is that you get transformed, you get metamorphomai in the image of Christ. That's what the burden for Apostle Paul was all about, metamorphomai and morphete process which he has made for us to be number one priority in Christ. And when you change from your old sin nature to be ruled by Lord God the Holy Spirit in your new man being put in Endikai Sunyakai Hosiatis Thessalatia terms, certainly breath by breath it is not a remorseful attitude but it is a repented attitude towards Christ. That's what you have to be changed. But these men don't understand how great they are being beguiled in the terms of Angastromuthas demand. <laughs> how great they are being occupied in the Nakash terms. And these Pentecostal crowds, traitors within, <laughs> enemies for Christianity in the Christendom are within rather than to be outside. And for Satan, the greatest enemy will be the one who is teaching day by day, breath by breath, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. It will count him as a key man. It will give him the greatest pressure of all time in all the angles. But yet, 
is preeminent in that. Do you know why? Greater is the one that is in him than the one who is in this world and Satan cannot even touch. In all the odd, infinite circumstances that could trouble the peace and the life of him because when he is in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit constantly reigning to show forth the Shekinah glory of the Lord of our God. We work peace and life in Christ. We are not worried about the death. We are not worried about our food. We are not worried about from where we get our money. We are worried about only one thing. Have I witnessed the truth? In spite of all the men of this world being put together to think it's wrong, we don't mind for it. We obey Lord of our God. We are answerable to Christ, not to this world. And in the trading manner, if they are not able to come, to be the Javans of Christ or Yains of Christ. As such, Shamam who had such vitality and vigor of the Lord of a God's fear in him, who went along to do by standing there for Lord's truth. So, dear brethren, though the other men vanished off, but he stood. He stood to be firm. He stood to speak the truth. He stood to be sure. And he stationed there and he continued there. And what did he do? He defended. That's what the word is all about. Very interesting for us. Not so. He defended to open the door for the right word of the Lord of our God. He defended to free from the influences of the things pertaining to the filthiness of cosmos thinking. Not only just he defended, but he made a sleeve of them, that is Naka. And this word Naka has a lot of meaning for us. For example, like the Moses rod, David's slingshot, and Anhakare cry of Samson. And even ox goad where they certainly killed and did the works of the Lord of a God. So, sliving word is naka. When you stand to the glory of the Lord of a God, like Shamam, Christ our Lord of a God is going to defend you by sliving. So that how he is going to slave? He is going to slave the mental faculties of your mind, which are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And day by day, he changes your mind from, divine viewpoint, from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint. That's how the sleeping process is all about. To crack them out. To cut them out. Like a weapon we need to be to the Lord. For us, the sleeping process is kneeling down in His presence. The KT theology. The Nitong theology. When your knees are racked and in the presence of the Lord our God, laboring in His soil through the dust, then your tongue will become the pen of the describer. That's what His sleeping is all about. Doesn't it look strange? But it's a fact. Moses was being used by the rod to teach him a lesson. David used the slingshot to teach a lesson to Goliath. At the cry of Anakare, Samson was being used to take the ass of a jaw and use a lesson for it. Today for us, what is the weapon? The weapon is only our offensive one, the word of the Lord of our God. How the process is to kneel down in his presence and to learn. To find a great victory for the Lord of our God in this battle of intensified stage of the angelic conflict. It looks strange, isn't it? But it's a fact. The nakal of the Lord of our God, when you stand firm to speak the truth, to be absolutely sure, to station there and to continue there, it is the duty of the Lord of our God to make you free by slaving whom your enemy, getting, getting every thought into captivity for Christ, getting every thought in the right fear of the Lord of our God to do his work, to do his will. And furthermore, what it is, our Lord of our God is going to give you a victory being worked of a great one through Yahweh Elohim. And the Lord worked a great victory. The self-existent one, Yehovah, what a name it is for us. The Tetragrammaton Lord being translated for it. 
He had a relationship with the nation of Israel being described as Yehovah, Yahweh, Elohim of hosts of Yahweh. But for us, for the church age, in relationship with Christ, it is nothing but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ the Lord. Jesus Christus. And now we have a special relationship with God the Father in heaven through His Son. And he is going to work in us by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit given for every believer in this church age. To be occupied with him, to be reigning in him, to understand our life in him. Because without Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that you can think of in the second phase of your Christian life after salvation. The phase two of your life. The phase one salvation, the phase two, your Christian way of life on this earth. Right from the day of your salvation, by faith alone, in Christ alone, taking your life till to the point of death or rapture, whichever could occur. And again in phase three, it is nothing but God the Father again taking care of it. And what is this phase two of our life on this earth? It is for the glory of the Lord our God, of eternal one, when we go through the proper process of suffering. Being absolutely to the term of perfection and established and settled in Christ. 1 Peter 5.10 To that eternal glory of the Lord our God by the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit first press First you suffer. Why you suffer? Demarcation between the things pertaining to the righteousness and unrighteousness. Men should recognize in you that you have a sickness of righteousness and truth. You have a disease of righteousness and truth. If the man doesn't wake up to realize that you have a disease of righteousness and truth in you, certainly you are enjoying in the health of unrighteousness and lies. So the first division, Prasa, 1 Peter 5.10, that you have made up your life, you are lying to understand the truth. And then what you do? Katarijo, your perfection. Not telelioi or the things pertaining to other word, but it is katarizo, a proper assigning of your work. It looks strange, isn't it? But it's a fact. Katarizo. For what you have to be rightly equipping, for what you have to be rightly fitting to that place. And every believer in Christ in the proper relationship with Lord God the Father in heaven because of his son calling him as Abba Father. Being made of a body to be the temple of the Lord our God as Shekinah glory. He calls through the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit in this phase two of our Christian way of life. Moving from Eusobians to become Daulos, from Daulos to become Desmios, when we are becoming the disciples of the Lord our God by daily taking of the word of Christ. He makes us for us to understand, dear brethren, you have to be in proper relationship with God the Father in heaven. So that he can work in you a great victory. Hmm. A victory which has not been won. A victory which has already been won. Therefore he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can even imagine or even think, says the scripture. It stands written that you can make exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think or even imagine. He is working in you such victory. But what do you do to your brethren? You constantly grieve and squelch and lie. You say you are absolutely moral. You say absolutely you are working the work of the Lord of our God by grieving Him. But you will not realize because you are paying tithes. You are thinking that you are doing such and such things. Doing good deeds. Fasting and praying. But not using the principle of rebound. The phase two of this life in this church age demands, dear brethren, breath by breath, word upon word, line upon line. And at every breath you have been called to purchase the Kairos movements in the chronological time. Every breath, every breath, every breath. <laughs> if you are not at every breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you are not purchasing to build your home with gold, silver or precious stones. But what you are building, you are building with wood and stubble. That's how this world is all about. You are becoming the copper vessels, not the image of God. Nakasha utensils you are becoming. Progosnicate vessels you are, you, are, you are becoming. You are being filled with the filthiness, but not you are being working with the Lord of God to work in you the greatest victory for which you and I have been designed in the church age. You are not allowing Lord God the Father to work in you the greatest victory, greatest victory. 
But here Shammah, he stood. He stood against them who fled, who vanished off, fearing what we do with the land of lentils, with the plot of lentils. But Shammah remembered, no, this is of the Lord. This belongs to my, so, but this belongs to my King David. And when Lord gave him that, certainly this land also belongs to us. And he stood there and he fought. Likewise today, when Christ our Lord our God has won over here on this earth, a victory over the angelic conflict upon the cross, how can we let go when he has ascended by that him we mean he descended into the lower parts of the earth and gave the bona fide gift of the pastor, teacher, evangelical work, and apostles and prophets what they have done their work, and now the work of pastor, teacher is to see and to establish every minute word of the Lord our God in the original language of the scriptures, for though the world may think it's not worthy and we can escape that verse or we can forsake that verse. But no, every word, every full stop, every comma, every exclamation, exclamation mark, mark in the Bible has a meaning for it and we cannot let it go so easily. We have to explain it. The same principle of Deuteronomy chapter 4. How can we let go every fate which has been given for us? Now, every word which has been given for us in the completion canon of scripture, how can we let it go? And the greatest theologians for them it may seem to think and to understand it's not needed for us to take the plot of lentils but it is a must for us when they stand for the minute things in the Lord so that Lord our God could call in little things you are faithful and I will give to you in your hands the major things of this life whom you want to obey the world your congregation or the word of God. How can we let go even the minute parts? When that God, the Holy Spirit, calls for us, the Arana process of Him, it searches the deep things of God. Even the minute word of the Lord of our God is so essential for us to change our thinking. When that God, the Holy Spirit, has spent this man in the Bible, we have something to learn from them. We have something to occupy our minds to realize are we walking contrary to the will of God or are we walking according to the will of God that's what it has been required for us to understand because Lord our God has made you to be the crown of his creation and how you want to be the filled in us of this earth Lord our God works and the one thing fashions up how did he fashion for the church age he fashioned us our victory through Christ. He fashioned for those after believing in Christ, being saved. They, walk, they need to walk a walk, a walk of life in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Not to grieve, not to squelch, not to lie, not to blaspheme, but to be constantly filled of the Spirit or controlled of the Spirit. Because you are not of your own now, you have been bought with a great price. So that glorify Lord in your body. And is going to work for us by sending forth those bona fide gifted pastor teachers who are in the past, who are in the present, who will be in the future till the rapture of the church could occur, who come from the right hand of God the Father, whose burden is to daily teach the right word, because as it is written, says the scripture. In the historical trends of Revelation chapters 1, 2, 3, So that now at present we can find, as Lord our Christ said for us long back while his ministry on this earth, he went along to prove they became den of thieves. But in the church age, what do we find? Already Satan's synagogue, Satan's throne and Satan's copulation point being producing for such false pastor teachers who divert from the right word of the Lord our God and not to teach and to train you up in the mind of Christ. That's what we are able to find. Aren't we doing that? If they would be, then certainly they would take a stand, a firm stand to witness only the truth and nothing but the truth. But they are not so. In the present Christendom, how great we need to be to the Lord. Every word from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 with proper isagogic categories and exegesis. If we go along to explain the terms of dispensations and if we go along to term and explain them in the terms of harmonetics and by that I mean the right dispensations, not the wrong dispensations how the people have come along to divide it. Teaching them in the right dispensations and making them the difference between the Israel, the church and the future eschatological events. 
we would certainly wake up to call to the Lord our God in integrity to say, Lord, help us. If we are doing wrongly thy word, help us to divide it more accurately. But we are willing with the humble request like Shamam to stand in the presence. If we could be there, Lord our God is going to work in you. Because already has worked out the Paltima privileges. The greatest and the highest privileges which has been given for us. The baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by the moment of salvation. The completed canon of scripture. The bona fide work of the pastor teacher to train you up. What else you require? Except you plea unto the Lord our God by your earnest requiring to Christ to say, Lord, send us those shepherds who shall feed us with knowledge and with understanding. Jeremiah 3.15 and Malachi 2.7 Send us those shepherds who shall teach us with authority. Not the one, because an authoritative document requires an authoritative, an authoritative person to be sent by the authority of the Lord of God to teach his word. What a privilege it would be when we learn those things. Authoritative document requires an authoritative person to handle it. But since the Bible has been translated into many languages and the people are interested in that, every knucklehead who has a vision and a dream in a night, he says, or who has a gift of playing instruments, you want to say, Lord spoke to me, let's run a church. Be aware about the filthiness of Nakash. The Lord our God has already worked for us. What? A victory. What a sort of a victory? A great victory. What is that victory? Tesuva. By men to say, where Lord God Almighty, the acts of help which have already delivered and have been experienced. Soteria. And what are the acts of him that have been delivered and already been experiencing in our lives? He has delivered us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of light. And if you walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit pertaining to the paths of Christ, giving him as a substitute for us in the terms of his Son. He says, imitate God the Father in heaven, conforming to the image of his dear beloved Son. And through Apostle Paul, he lays down for us, as I imitate God the Father in heaven through Christ, you imitate me and follow. What is that experience you need to have? What did Apostle Paul say? That man in my care for the church, Second Corinthians chapter 11. Apostle Paul said, for us, in spite of all the sufferings that have gone through, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about one principle, what it is, what they're teaching daily in the church. What they're teaching daily to the flock. If that's our experience, what we have in the Bible already, where Christ our Lord our God said, once again, to make it a home of prayer, he threw the money changers and he set up there daily, daily, daily teaching the word. Luke 19, 47 and 48. Already delivered and already having into experience the word which is nothing but Tesua, victory. Already Christ our Lord our God has won the battle. Every believer can win the battle in Christ. In the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when they are able to realize they have been delivered from the power of darkness and they have been entered into the kingdom of light. And what is the experience process? Already we have a whole fame of records, says Hebrews chapter 11. The hall of faith. And dear brethren, we overcome our infirmities by faith. By that we mean the solid word of God, our Lord, day by day we take. And what is that victory? It's a great victory. Gadol in the Hebrew. It is a far higher. And where the people cannot even reach or think of it, it is far great, exceedingly noble, proud victory to the Lord. And that is what it has to be in our body, mind, wherewith he has called for us to enlarge through the spirit of him being given at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone and creating the human spirit for us. Therefore he says, through my spirit I rejoice in the work of the spirit, Apostle Paul in Philippians 1. And when that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, reigns in us, rules in us, it is he who is going to get the greatest victory of Catarysos. And that's what he says, the catharsis process of 2 Corinthians 39, down keeping you day by day.
For what process? The catarismon process, which has already been completed, says Ephesians 4.13. Maturity in Christ. And how many of the people are still immature? How many of the people are still been there in the point not to realize that if they live, they have to take a stand from for the word of God of our Lord and they have to divide and leave path the old paths and put upon the new clothes, the new clothes of the new man in Endicasia. For us, if it is to live, it is for Christ. If it is dying, it is for Christ because death is profitable for us because we sleep in Christ. Not as a man of an un, in, in the terms of walking like an unbeliever, but in the terms of a mature believer in Christ. Christ for whom they have been designed this catarismon and the catarysis process. So to be large in body and mind and to honor and to magnify and to promote and to be to the terms of the word of the Lord of God very specifically dear brethren to be proudly like a tower and a pillar. That's the great victory what we have. Shaman stood, the Lord worked. Today if we kneel in the presence of the Lord of our God and we are loving to write the word of Christ, kneeling down in his presence as I've covered in one of our tapes. Not only just writing once, but writing thrice. Not only just writing thrice, but writing eight times. Honoring the greatest chapter in the Bible, the word of God, Psalm 119, dividing into eight verses for each alphabet. If you stand for that, Lord of our God will fashion and design his great victory, the victory of a legendary impact in this intensified stage of the angelic conflict. In spite of all the odd infinite trials and circumstances that you come along, that great victory in Christ. Think about this issue, dear brethren. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. And if we don't come to do that, like Shamma, you will be the Javans in the place of image of God. You will be the Javans of Nakash, of Satan's cosmos thinking. But we have victory in Christ who has called us for his victory to reign like kings in this church age. Leading every thought into captivity for Christ. As Christ our Lord our God was triumphant enough, even we need to know about that. What is triumphant enough in our lives to get to understand the victory of the Lord, which is more specific for us. When we get every thought into captivity for Christ. Dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. It's your life. You want to be the Javan for Christ or you want to be a Javan for Nakash of Satan's filthiness of this earth. And since we have the sperm of Christ, it is a must that we need to be the image of God. Where he made for us to be his crown of creation. An uh, E-icon process of Colossians 3.10 calling for us. Putting to death the necromatter of the lustful patterns of the old sin nature and making the word of the Lord of our God to dwell in us richly. And leading us to understand for which Lord of our God has originally planned for us through Adam and Eve. And we could confirm to that glory. And how true it would be for us to realize, Luke 10, 21. It is the pleasing of God the Father to reveal these things to babes. <laughs> babes in Christ we ought to be. But not the babes of drinking milk. Babes in malice. But wise men in understanding to grow up from milk to bread, from bread to meat. And that's the privilege of the pastor teacher to train you up. Dear brethren, think over these issues. The Allahs may come, says Galatians 5.10, what we have read. But you are answerable to the Lord of a God. The act of judging Krima through the mind of Christ. And this is what he is making you to be absolutely persuasive. In the grace of the Lord of a God to be faithful. Though the people will come 
with their Allah's attitude. They may look appear to be of the same kind, but they are different in numerically. They may come to you to tell the word of the Lord also we are preaching, being Pentecostal crowds or such and such denominations who are against the mind of Christ to do the will of God. They may come, to, they may come and tell to you 111 things. But the act of judging in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit can lead you to witness only for the truth. And nothing else apart from the truth. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too small. Every breath, if you don't take a firm stand for the truth, you will get yourself entangled into the yoke of bondage of sin. If you don't come to learn, to acquire, to possess, to know this truth day by day, Proverbs 8, 34, you are entangled yourself in sin. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So which way you want to go, you decide. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movement is being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. You know, ability telling to Lord God, the Father, that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my God, my Savior. That is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you is so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine so that you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry Sathon Lagan. Herald the word in season or out of season because of the diamond my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond my witnesses in well Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamond my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter how ever the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, what a great privilege it is for us to learn the verse in Ezekiel chapter 27, verse 13, the Javant, hot and attractive, not being like Shaman to thy glory but changing thy image wherewith you have made to be the crown of your creation into the vessels of Nakash, the vessels of filthiness by heeding lies and having their merchandise work, treading in the rationalism and empiricism of this earth just for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley making belly their gods and forgetting that they are the heavenly citizens of Christ on this earth. Father, already you have worked out a victory for us, changing from, transferring us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Father, help us to witness the truth. When we experience and walk in the path of the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, the paths of thy truth, giving an example for us like Paul, who said, I imitate God the Father in heaven, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You imitate me by following my paths. Help us to be like that, O Lord. And everything we give, we are, we, we are thankful to thee, O Lord, and we give you thanks with the praise of our lips, O Lord. It should be accepted. Because, Lord, anything in thy truth, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you delight in it. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father, so that, Lord, thou, Lord, might be glorified. We'll let God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in this tape. Amen.